Those of you that follow my channel know that I am moving to Arizona and I'm going to be looking to install a better pool table light over my pool table there. So I've done some research and those of you who are also looking at uh, buying a light or building one yourself might find this research uh, valuable. I've, I've actually spent hours last night and hours this morning uh, researching online and looking at the options for LED light strips from different manufacturers. I learned a lot and I'd like to share that and maybe it'll help you. Uh, although I reserve the right to be wrong because I am not an expert. Let's start at the top. What is the top today in pool table lights? I think everyone knows it's the Predator Arena light and it's a perimeter light. That is, it's a single strip of light that runs around the perimeter of your table. You actually install the lights kind of directly over the rail. And those of you who are familiar with that also know that it's quite expensive. It can be a thousand dollars or even a little bit more if you want to get the model with the remote control depending on the size of your table so the first so we'll start at the top and then I'll work work down from there and what I learned so is the predator uh, perimeter arena light worth it I would say yes and here's why it's really good quality materials what how, how is that light better than the old uh, any other light fixture that we've seen. And there's several reasons. First of all is the design being a perimeter. The light fixture was designed for high quality video. If you look at old videos and if you look at some of my videos of my home table, what you'll see is a hot spot in the middle of the table. In other words, the light is not even across the surface of the table. So having a light that runs around the perimeter instead and just that thin strip the light is shining down at the rails and then across and so you get an even distribution of light so you don't get any hot spots on your video. And then the other reason for having the perimeter light is that if you want to film, you can put a light dead center over the top of your table sh uh, shooting straight down. And that's what I'm leaning towards. I wanted to see though if I could reproduce that on a, with a do-it-yourself kind of build your own, get your own materials and build your own. So I'm going to cover that as well a little bit later. So what is it, aside from the design, because anybody can design something like that, what is it about the Predator lights that make them, make them worth so much money? There's several things. There's, there's three specifications that I've learned about considering, uh, uh, concerning these LED lights, strip lights. And that's the CRI, CRI, the lumens, and the color temperature. Color temperature, probably a lot of you have heard of, that has to do with how white the white light is. So uh, the temperature is measured in degrees of Kelvin. It's just a number. And it ranges from 3,000 to about 6,500. So 3,000 is a warm light. It has a very yellow uh, hue to it, even though it's a white light. And then 6,500 Kelvin, the other end of the spectrum, is a white light. It's a brilliant white light and often, often said to be a blue light, can have a blue tinge. But what we're looking for for pool table lights is the most natural color white light that does not change the colors of the table, the, the balls, or the felt. And that's it could, about 5,000 Kelvin, or it could be 5,500. Some people even use 6,000 Kelvin. It's called a cool light. The warmer lights tend to be cheaper. So that's one reason why that Predator light is expensive. The other thing you're looking for is lumens. Lumens has to do with how bright the light is. Then the other specification that the, that the quality LED strips have is CRI and I think that stands for color rendition index. How true the colors of the balls and the cloth look on video as compared to that actual color. So the Predator light for example I believe has a 90 CRI which is what you want. The other things that the Predator lights do is they are tunable and dimmable. What does tunable mean? Tunable is the color temperature. So if, if you buy a model of Predator light that has a remote control, they offer them with and without, the tunable ones will let you change the color temperature. They're also dimmable. Dimmable means with the remote control you can uh, reduce the brightness. Then the other thing is the, what they call the LED channel. The channel is a U-shaped thing that receives light. Your light strips are, are usually a flexible material, often with a sticky back, 
And so you need to mount them in something so that you can hang them from the ceiling or mount them to the ceiling. The Predator Light is an aluminum channel and it has a diffuser, an anti-glared diffuser. And if you look at them, uh, I think they've got kind of that diamond shape pattern in it. So that, that again, helps to, to distribute the light. And then the last thing that the Predator Lights have is the LEDs are high density. So what does that mean? If you go to, for example, Home Depot and buy an LED light strip, you see these, it's, a, it's like a piece of, of uh, tape, like a measuring tape, and then it has little yellow squares on it, and the yellow squares are where the LEDs are. And there's actually a number of LEDs within each of the squares, and then the squares are spaced out on the strip. They might be a couple of inches apart or six or eight inches apart. High density refers to the spacing of those squares. The higher density ones are going to be very close together. Rather than having them spaced two to six, eight inches apart, they'll be no more than a quarter inch apart. It also refers to the number of LEDs inside of each square. So your, your, fixture, your cheap fixtures will be, lower density fixtures will have two or six or eight LEDs per inch. And then your highest quality LED strips can have 150, 200, even three or four or 500 LEDs per inch. Uh, a predator uses a high density LED and it's possible that they use what is called a Cobb LED. And I don't know that for a fact, I, I'm guessing, but I think the C stands for continuous. So I talked about high density being having the squares close together with a lot of LEDs. A Cobb or a continuous LED light strip when you look at it, you don't see any squares. Instead, it's a single line of yellow LEDs mounted down the center of the strip. And that is the most uniform light you can get. So it's possible that's what Predator uses in their fixtures. I don't know. And I don't think they have any interest in letting us know. And that's fine. But I spent a lot of time on different manufacturers' website on the internet researching these, these lights. And if you want to buy, if you want to purchase the LED strips, the high quality ones, the high density ones with a good um, color rendering index, um, high lumens, and a good light temperature, the, the cheapest, the very cheapest light strip I could find was $80. And the, the, the LED strips consistently come in reels of, of six, each reel is 16 feet long. So if you're going to do a nine-foot table, you're going to need two reels. So that's $160. And that's the cheapest. And that's probably not as good of a quality as what Predator uses. It's really good quality. You, you probably wouldn't. It might be hard to tell the difference. But it's probably not as good as the Predator one. And when you start looking at the really high-density ones and the Cobb LED strips, you start looking. There's, they start to cost 150 to 200 to 250 dollars for one 16 foot reel, one 16 foot long strip. So you can be looking at three to 500 dollars or even more just for the LED strip. That's before you've added the, the channels, the diffusers, the transformers, the wiring, the mounting, anything else. And that's why I say the Predator lights are worth it because they're just top notch in all the materials. Uh, I'm sure they're making a good profit. You can probably get the materials yourself and build it for less, but how much less and why is it really worth it? <laughs> if you are in the market for the best quality and you have the budget that allows it, man, those are fantastic lights. What's the next option? The next option, and not for do-it-yourselfers, there is another option, and it's called Perimeter Billiard Lighting. And by the way, I am not affiliated with any of these companies. I do not get anything if you buy one of their lights, and so I'm not going to put any links in the description. You're, you're all grown-ups, and you know how to Google things and find them on your own. And their prices, it depends on the size of table and, and, and uh, the size of the arena light you want. Uh, but their prices are generally one-third to one-half of the cost of the Predator lights. So are they as good? Um, not quite, but they're darn good. The main difference that I've been able to notice between Predator and the Perimeter Builder lighting is that the perimeter ones are not tunable or dimmable. But if you don't care about those things, the perimeter billiard light has, I believe the, the color rendition index is 85 compared to Predator's 90. Don't quote me on that. Check out their website and see for yourself. The channels that the, the light strips are mounted in aren't as good as the Predator. 
the, the joints aren't as good, so they, they, can, they can leak light. And they even say on their website, just put a piece of black tape over the joints to, to block out that light leakage. The, the other choice, what I started out doing is I, I said to myself, man, I can figure this out and I can build a Predator light just as good as Predator for, for way less money. And, and, uh, cause I'm a do it yourself and, and I got all the tools. And, uh, I no longer think that that's the case. I, I have priced it out. I've done, I, I've spent uh, hours pouring over the offerings from the manufa online manufacturers that you can order from. Depending on which LED strip you choose, like I said, it's going to be 160 is the very cheapest I could find, which probably isn't as good a quality as Predator, up to three, four, five hundred dollars for the LED strips if you want to make sure that it's that quality. So that's just the LED strips. Now you got to buy the materials for the channels. A lot of these companies do sell the channels, but now you're going to have to figure out how to join them and assemble them. Whereas the Predator and Perimeter light fixtures is a, is a kit ready to assemble. That I think I'm leaning towards the Perimeter Billiard Light system. I'll probably make a decision tomorrow and look into ordering. I think that's what I want to go with because I tell you what, I, I priced it out and it's going to be $400 for everything. And the nine foot light from perimeter billiard lighting is like 550. So why not just get the system that's already specced out and, and ready to assemble? The other options, there are some people who are do it yourselfers who don't, don't care about those, those, uh, the color rendition. They just want it to be okay and they just want it to be bright enough. And I think the most important spec that you're looking for, if you don't want to spend that kind of money, if you want to do it yourself, is the color temperature. You want to get something that's 5,000 Kelvin. And that's the easy part. There's plenty of fixtures that, you, heck, you can buy 5,000 Kelvin fixtures from Home Depot. If you look the, at the videos that I've recorded here at my home table, I bought two two foot by four foot LED fixtures. And they were like $120 a piece, 5,000 Kelvin, and very good lumens. The, the, la the cheapest option, there's a lot of people online who have tried to reproduce the perimeter concept. But if you look on Amazon, there's a couple of different uh, names, Chinese manufacturers, and they're four foot long strips. They're LED fixtures, but they have a curved, uh, usually a frosted diffuser. And they're very inexpensive. You can get like an eight pack, eight four foot long fluorescent strips for like a hundred bucks or even 80 bucks. The disadvantage with those is you're not gonna get the color rendition index you probably won't get the lumens, the brightness of the fixture, as well as the Predators or the Perimeter Billiard. You'll probably end up with four or six four-foot-long tubes, and you'll have to come up with a way to suspend them, and then you're going to see a dark gap of light between each strip. So though that is what I learned. I hope that helps you guys. As I said, I am not an expert. I, per I probably said something wrong. Feel free to correct me in the correct in the comments. Tell me what your experience is if you've done some research or if you bought a light fixture and installed it. Uh, how do you feel about it? How did it work out? Which of those options is is your light fixture closest to, and and what did it cost you? Maybe we can get uh, some get to a lot of good information gathered together in one area in the comment section of this video. But I'll let you guys know, uh, I, I, I'm going to be, uh, it's about two weeks I close on my, my house in Arizona, and I'm going to be setting up the pool table and the light fixture is one of the first things I'm going to do. And I will let you know what I go with, how much I spent, and what my experience is. Hey, man, let me know in the comment section what you think, what you know about LED lights for pool tables, and uh, maybe we'll get a conversation going. Thank you for watching, and see you next time. Bye.